Welcome to episode 26 of the Peep Show edition of Bare Naked Bravery. This is Emily Ann Peterson. I am your host. And Peep Shows are a mini peek behind the curtain of the kind of bravery that I am encountering on a weekly basis. We publish these on Fridays. And sometimes I answer questions submitted by Instagram followers, Facebook community members and other artists who have submitted their questions via our website at the bottom of barenakedbravery.com there's a little link that says submit a question and you can do that if you are on instagram and you'd like to submit your question that way or via our facebook community you, all you have to use is the hashtag ask emily ann when you post anything on either location and i will make sure to collect it and answer it for a future time But I picked this question submitted by the lovely Libby Bryant because I encountered this question a lot this two weeks ago while I was at a songwriter's retreat. I got to spend the week with a handful of songwriters in various experience levels and also along got some face good FaceTime with my songwriting mentor, Jan Christ. And she, sneak peek, is going to be a guest on the show soon because she and I got to record the first Bare Naked Bravery in-person interview. All of our other interviews are all done via online, via like Zoom or Skype. And I'm really excited to jump into the live in-person interviewing elements. So Libby, let's get to the question here. Libby asked this question. She says, how do you put yourself out there if you don't know exactly what you want? Should you just wait until you're 100% clear? And I encountered this two weeks ago while I was writing this song at this workshop, and it's tricky. I mean, the the song in question for me was such a raw subject matter, not nece- and it wasn't necessarily personal except the fact that I observed this. So to give you some backstory – The very same day that I interviewed Jared Angaza, whose episode is just two weeks previous to this, he and I talked a lot about advocacy and how to witness pain. Well, unbeknownst to me, my dad had asked me to join him for this documentary viewing because I was visiting my parents at the time and so went to go see this documentary called Last Man in Aleppo, which is all about the White Helmet Brigade in Aleppo. And it was so raw and graphic and real and painful and also wistful and beautiful. There's really, there was something so striking about everything in that film, but it really stuck with me. I think it also had to do with the the timing of talking about advocacy with Jared and Gaza. And I just could not shake any of that from my mind. So... When my songwriting mentor presented everybody with their song prompts, I basically threw mine away because I knew that I needed to write this song. And I didn't know what it was going to be like. I didn't know what I really needed to say, even. I just didn't know. So I started. And I think, Libby, in in regards to your question, do you wait until you're 100% clear? I would have to say no, because I think the majority of life is not clear. (laughs) I mean, take, say, a marriage, getting married. You are, you know, like what that person is going to turn into or what your lives together are going to hold. There is no way to know that ahead of time. And so you just have to jump in and say, I do. In regards to doing art, same thing. You just have to jump in and be willing to risk something. Be really willing to. In my case, I was risking the week of time spent writing this song, I was risking my energy level for that week because it's really emotionally draining subject matter to be talking about war and bombing buildings. And how do you describe and communicate that kind of pain and suffering and not being willing to abandon your home in a song? Like you have to unfold all of that information over the course of the week. And I wasn't sure if I had the energy to do it. But I think when you are being called to write something or called to do something, 
you just have to jump in and do it even though it's not 100% clear. However, you know, I know that that 100% clearness factor plays a big role into how much fear we have when we are facing something. So I would encourage you that if you are facing something that you have to do and you're not 100% clear about, you can do your due diligence by doing all the research. You can do, you can collect all of the what ifs if you wanted. That would be a lot of work. And at some point then it's wasted energy as well, you know, but sometimes going down those rabbit holes of what ifs really helps prepare yourself for what really could happen. You know, like if you're facing leaving your day job to jump in full time to your artist job or your your one true love job, <laughs> then that's a very much not everything is clear. And it's really important to cover your tracks or, you know, basically cover your butt and make sure that if if you suddenly lose all your clients in your one true love job, that you have enough cash to float you for a month or two while you can get a hold of your bearings and re re steer the ship, so to speak. So those what ifs are helpful. If you are facing something that you have to accomplish and you don't quite know what it is that you want it to become, I say go for it and start. You know, like if you are, excuse me, I'm I'm in Orcas Island and if you can hear a plane, that's because I'm very close to an airport right now. I, I think that if you jump into a project basically and just try one angle, what's the parable or the, the proverb, the African proverb, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, which is, I hate that. I hate that. I don't want to eat an elephant, but <laughs> you have to take one small step. And if you are going forward in a big project and you're not quite sure how it's all going to turn out, start with one corner of it, maybe jumping in from that one corner will give you a better picture of the whole project. And that's what I would, that, that's my encouragement to you. That's what I did this, you know, a couple of weeks ago with this song specifically and how it turned out. It's really great. I actually don't think it's done. I might spend another week up here in August reworking or rewriting it because it's, you know, I think it has the potential to be something really, really wonderful or more wonderful than it already is. So it is a gift to be able to witness these projects that we jump into that we're not 100% clear. It is a gift to witness them unfold and become the thing that they were called to become. I know Elizabeth Gilbert talks a lot about how our ideas find us. We don't find our ideas in terms of creativity. And I really like, and especially when it comes to songwriting, that's the case for me. Like I jump in and I go, Hey, what's the song? What does the song want to become? And it has really less to do with what I want to do, what I want to create. You know, I went into this, this work writing retreat thinking, yes, I get to have a week to write an upbeat song. <laughs> and what came out was this really mournful, medium tempo, oh, I mean, war song, for lack of better words. And and that's not the kind of song that I thought I needed to add to my repertoire. But I'm, you know, it was a real honor to witness it unfold. And at a certain point when you jump in and you basically open yourself up to being a vessel of the work of creativity, then you get to witness all of these beautiful things come out of it. So I encourage you to do the same and as much as you can, at least, you know, having that faith and that trust in the process itself makes the entire project so much more enjoyable, especially if you don't know what it's supposed to become and especially if you don't understand how it is supposed to look and turn out. So that's my suggestion to you, Libby, and to everyone else. If you are enjoying this podcast, I encourage you to share it with a friend. That is the most powerful way that we can spread bravery. If you haven't listened to Jared and Gaza's episode, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to it. It 
was it was a very meaningful conversation for me personally and i'm pretty sure i'm not the only person who will get something out of it it was really really a beautiful conversation if you haven't if you ever get the chance to watch the last man in aleppo the documentary go for it but be prepared to spend a couple hours afterwards unpacking and digesting it emotionally because it's a really intense documentary (laughs) <laughs> I'm really excited about our upcoming class series called Guts. If you're interested in it, go to barenakedbravery.com forward slash guts and you can check out what we've got planned in store for you. It will be talking in this six week class series. We'll be talking a lot about these kinds of issues when it comes to your creativity and how to put yourself out there. So if you tend to be somebody who asks these questions a lot, let's spend six weeks unfolding and unpacking all of it because it's really, it's a really, it's a really good topic series and we will be applying it, all of these topics to one unfinished project that you have. And we'll be using that unfinished project as kind of like a sandbox for all of these topics, this, that we talk about over the six weeks it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Okay. So that is all that I have for you this week. I hope that this weekend holds for you a really brave one. I want you to be improvisational, imaginative, vulnerable, and brave. 